Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting the people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me as always is my good buddy and co-host Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? Hey man, it is going pretty well. I'm, uh, I always say it, but I'm excited for this one for a particular reason. It's a little bit different. Yeah, so me and Matt have took a brief hiatus from recording any episodes lately. In fact, I think we still have one that's like recorded and we haven't published. Um, But uh, with all this mess going on in the outside world and our agencies being busy and stuff, we just need a little bit of a break from it. And as we've done that, we've kind of come back with some ideas on how we can swap out some things in the show and hopefully make it a little bit tighter, um, a little bit more of a conversation and hopefully more enjoyable. So the idea here is he and I both have come with a topic to discuss today. Uh, So we're gonna spend a few minutes on each one of our topics and discuss those. Uh, We have one post from the group uh, in which that I've selected today uh, that we're gonna discuss a little bit and then we're gonna wrap it up and get out of here. So my guess is these episodes will be a little bit shorter. Uh, We're not gonna have a guest on today. We're not promoting anything. Uh, that's not to say we won't in the future, but uh, this is really just a conversation to kind of talk about what's going on in our agencies, uh, things we have on our mind and what we're working on in the hopes that it sparks conversation in the group. It gets us all thinking and helps everyone out. Did I uh, summarize that kind of how you were looking at it, Matt? Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's pretty close to it. Um, I think the only thing to add is that I know nothing about the, uh, the post that Kyle chose. And I also don't know anything about the, uh, the topic that uh, he's bringing to the table and, I don't think that he knows what I'm going to be talking about today either. Right. So this is a bit of an experiment in itself. We talked about kind of uh, not scripting these things out, but at least discussing them beforehand. And our fear is then we're kind of calculated in our response. And I think all of this turns out better when we're just having a real life conversation. Matt and I jump on Zoom calls uh, several times a week and just have normal everyday conversations about what's going on. And oftentimes when we get done with the conversation, we'll say, damn, we should have recorded that. (laughs) That would have made good content. Uh, So the idea is kind of to recreate that, uh, but knowing we're actually recording it in the beginning. Uh, So the thought is here that we don't know what each other is gonna bring up and what we'll be discussing today. And hopefully that makes it a little bit more of a candid conversation. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh, first today and I want to know what's going on in Matt's world all right well Matt's world is uh, is it's going fairly well um, I had a, a client reach out to me um, they are a, a fairly prominent country club and due to everything that's going on recently they uh, they weren't able to open um, their restaurant which for the most part during their down season is what brings in their money um, they decided that rather than, you know, be, being a restaurant, not being able to, uh, to, to do and operate the way that, uh, they're, they're used to, um, they wanted to set up something to allow their, uh, their members to purchase not actual like meals, but individual, uh, like grocery items, um, during like, especially when like the, the toilet paper was, you know, super scarce and all of that, uh, right. which I think is an awesome idea. The uh, the way that they they brought that to me though was I do a lot of print design for them, and they were like, "Hey, let's uh, let's create some sort of a menu, uh, like downloadable PDF that somebody can fill out and then send back." And uh, without really thinking about it, I went right to the to the illustrator and and started to to put something together. And then I, I quickly realized, well, this. This is really bad on the user side of things. Um, yeah. Some browsers allow you to fill in uh, PDFs online. Some don't. So Hopefully that means they were going to put a fax number on it so you could just <laughs> fax it back to them. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. it was just like, it, it was, it was so much more than it needed to be. Um, plus this is a, a static PDF and their stock is an inventory is going to be changing on the fly, you know, day after day. So that means that I would have to edit that PDF over and over and over again, re-upload it. It would just be a mess. So instead I was like, Hey, why don't we create an online order form that members can go in, sign in using their, uh, their member ID and go through a, like a step-by-step form, order what they want, have it total the, uh, the amounts you guys get the email, uh, of that order. You can call and confirm, Etc. And 
that way, like, you know, as things change, <clears throat> excuse me, they can, uh, we can update it really, really quickly. Um, so they liked the idea. I went through with it and to date we've done three different forms now. So they have three different, uh, uh, like kind of segments. They've got the grocery uh, form. Now they've got the uh, the catering one, which they're pushing harder because that's kind of opening up again. Um, and uh, they, they did a couple others as well that don't have anything to do with uh, food. But now that they saw how easy it is and how much their, their members, um, you know, found that hopping on their phone, placing an order, filling out these forms, how, how well that works, uh, we started to branch out and start doing it to other uh, facets of their business. So did they have any kind of e-commerce on their website before this? No, zero. Okay. And this so, form actually, so they didn't want to, uh, to go through e-commerce because, um, some of the, uh, some of the items just basically like they needed to call and confirm some of the, uh, the orders before they, uh, they placed them like meat, for example, uh, like a lot of that's based on market price rather than, you know, a static price. Um, so there isn't actually any transactions going through. It is totaling it and then they'll call confirm and take the, uh, the payment then. So it made it much, much easier on my side to do this, but still super impressive to the, uh, to the client. Yeah. So I guess the question is how well is it working? What are they saying from it? Uh, well, they get about 200 visits to the, uh, to the form a day now. Um, and probably about, I'm thinking, the last time I checked, it was like 300 to 400 orders a week. Um, and that's, that's incredible. And, and I mean, the, these, these orders are, are between like three, like around $300, uh, a piece. Jeez. I mean, these are groceries, you know, like that's what everybody's uh, groceries cost a lot. So, you know, it's, right. it's, it's pulling in more money than they had assumed it would. So they're way they're more than I assumed it, it was going to, what's that? I said way more than I assumed it was going to. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, as soon as uh, they put the, the message out, they sent out like a mass email to all their members and they're like, hey, this is available now. And it just, it just rocketed out. It was super cool to see. It, it, I made a couple notes as you were talking here because it reminded me of a couple things. I have a customer um, who has a restaurant and, you know, I think everybody took all this shutdown and stuff differently. Uh, he's kind of a take the bull by the horns type guy. And what he did um, was start for Texas. selling. Yeah, 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 you have to. Um, and it's a barbecue place, so it just makes sense. Um, what he did was start selling his restaurant supplies through the drive-through. And in Texas, things weren't crazy as as shut down as some other places, so people could still come in and get uh, to go orders. So he had all restaurant supplies set up like a grocery store inside the dining room area. So. Um, the way I, I, I learned about this was the supply chains for uh, commercial stuff and just st dr stuff direct to consumers. So like toilet paper, for instance, it's two completely different supply chains. The same suppliers aren't making commercial toilet paper right. that make, uh, you know, uh, toilet paper you find in the grocery store. So it wasn't so much, you know, there was still plenty of toilet paper left, like commercial toilet paper. Uh, so... It, it spans across more things than just that, but he was still able to get all kinds of restaurant supplies that you couldn't get in the grocery store. Wasn't this the uh, the same client that uh, if you ordered like the family meal, you got a free like roll of toilet paper or something, yeah. <laughs> which I think is brilliant. Exactly. I mean, it's so hilarious, but holy cow. Yeah, that works. Yeah, but I mean, it was just like, hey, you know, we have all these restaurant supplies that we're not going to use now. Cleaners, toilet paper, big big ass bottles of ketchup, whatever, we're not going to be using because there's no people in our restaurant now. Uh, you know, what can we do with them? And at the same time, he had this surplus of stuff and all his customers are at home going without these things because you can't find them in the grocery store. So he just started selling them directly through the restaurant, Man, that's which smart. is pretty amazing. Just the way some people have been, you know, able to find solutions in this while some other people just you know, kind of whine that everything's happened and, and don't do anything about it, you know? And the other thing that I think is interesting about this is it illustrates the point that when customers come to you with something, especially when they come to you with a solution in mind, they often don't know what they need at all. Because the idea of you designing a PDF <laughs> and then them like sending it to people and that's a terrible solution. Like that's a really bad idea. Um, but I'm sure it was, you know, just what made sense to them, like an, an order form or whatever. And that's why 
our position of being able to be like problem solvers and come up with solutions that make sense for customers and listen to what, you know, listen to what the problem is and help them find a solution. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Absolutely. Um, and actually I, uh, I don't work that much with like, um, multi-step forms or like more complicated forms. <clears throat> and, uh, one of the, one of the requests was this like three, like de the, this dependency that was, uh, that was built on you. If this order contained, uh, man, what was it? It was like barbecue wings or something. Um, there's bone in bone out. So you needed to choose one of those. And then if one of those was chosen, uh, display another choice that was uh, what kind of sauce and like it, that was mandatory. You had to choose a sauce or plain. Right. Um, and like a couple of those, uh, those conditional steps. And I want to give a big shout out to, uh, to the folks on the admin bar that, uh, that helped me out. I posted that question and within an hour I had uh, exactly what I needed to do. And uh, man, thank you so much, guys. So, so do you think this is something once everything's back up and running, they'll still have some kind of, I mean, maybe not the same exact grocery thing when people can just go to the grocery store, but do you think they'll still have some kind of operation like this? Yeah, they, uh, they reached out to me a couple of days ago and they said that, um, the, the, like the, the to go ordering as far as like the, the grocery items that they're going to be taking that down. I'm actually working on uh, redeveloping their current site into something a little bit more modern, nicer, like easier to, to navigate and all that. But uh, no, I'll definitely be moving, especially like the catering, because that's something that's always going to be available. Um, and the way that the menu works is, is yeah, I mean, it works really, really well for them. Um, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be pulling that into the, uh, the new site as well, and they'll, they'll keep on rolling with it. It's pretty awesome. It's a good way to find a solution, especially you start doing the math of uh, all those orders that have come in that literally, if they wouldn't have done this, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of dollars they would have been missing out on. Yeah, for sure. And even if we did it the uh, with the PDF, I mean, that would have been a lot of loss as well, just because of the, the frustration that, that their users or their clients or their members or however you want to refer to them uh, right. would have suffered. They, they would have abandoned it and they wouldn't have done it. For sure. All right. Well, let's uh, let's change course here. Um, I have something that I've been spending a lot of time on here recently uh, that I don't think you've gotten into at all. So it'd be uh, interesting to see your thoughts. So uh, if you think back to, I don't know, a little over a year ago when uh, when Gutenberg was on its way, but not yet here, uh, there were, you know, people forking WordPress and having a fit. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, I really didn't worry about it too much. Uh, and as the date approached i just installed the classic editor plugin on all my websites yeah, i think so a lot I'm, of us oh, did I'm, yeah i'm just gonna leave it like this for the time being and you know i'll play with gutenberg and see what happens so uh since it's been out every once in a while i get a wild hair and i uninstall the classic editor and i play with gutenberg and i get a little frustrated and i pretty much just reinstall the uh the classic editor plugin well here i don't know if a few months ago i'm like okay every new site from now on I, I took it out took the classic editor out of my starter site and from now on i'm just going to force myself to use this i'm not using the the wordpress editor um gutenberg or otherwise that much usually just for blog posts if i'm just putting in content for a blog post article um because for the most part i'm using a page builder um so i i got used to it i, I won't say that i really loved it or hated it or whatever it was something new to get used to um but uh as you know i'm a, I'm a big fan of generate press and their developer tom has been working on a new plugin called generate blocks uh and i've i've not followed it super closely um but just kind of saw that he was working on this and stuff and so i got a buddy uh, mike oliver who i believe is in the group now uh he's a fantastic designer uh he's been helping with all this and uh, i've been talking with him back and forth in messenger and i'm like you know i'm gonna give this a shot so finally the the plugin came out it was in the repository and i downloaded it and i'm gonna tell you i was really underwhelmed when i opened it up <laughs> because there's literally uh what one two there's four blocks basically to the entire plugin now it's free so you know can't really complain there uh but i really thought this is going to be way more powerful than four blocks and mike just kept telling me you know like 
believe me, once you start using this, you're not going to want to use a page builder anymore. This is going to change everything, blah, blah, blah. And after I opened it and saw four blocks, it's uh, container, grid, headline, and buttons. That's it. I'm like, okay, so basically, you know, you look at the Elementor editor and there's like 500 widgets or whatever is in there. And then all the add-ons and shit. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do anything with this. Uh, but he posted a couple of videos of how he was laying stuff out using generate blocks. You can go to generateblocks.com or you can search for it in the repository and check it out. Um, I'm going to tell you, I spent, you know, a week off and on playing with this and trying to recreate pages, including like the generate blocks website using generate blocks in the block editor, dude, it is amazingly powerful. Yeah, like, I mean, you, you showed me not... uh, like a rebuilt page uh, mimicking one that you had previously built in uh, an Elementor, and like, I mean, they were they were pretty much one for one, and what it, it didn't take you nearly as long as you had, you had assumed, right? Yeah, I mean, I think still I have a big learning curve here because I'm I'm so heavily reliant on Elementor, and it's I mean, it's a cr the page builders we have are a crutch. You know, I don't think both of us would. Uh, probably admit if page builders didn't exist our companies wouldn't exist as they are today <laughs> yeah, um, that's, that's true do so many things it's like the cheat code to everything um so there is i mean there you need to have more i don't know if developer is the right word you don't have to code a bunch of shit but you, you can't you can't go about things as the same way you can with the page builder so right now it's still taking me longer to build something out uh using generate blocks and block editor uh, than it would Elementor, but that's just more practice than anything. I spend a lot more time in Elementor. Um, but it's pretty amazing the way it all works and being able to lay out these containers, all the, the container block that they give you has all the uh, background options, margin, padding, all those kinds of things. Uh, the grid allows you to be able to put uh, multiple columns inside of a container. Uh, so one thing that's nice is, you know, if you need uh, you know, with Elementor, sometimes the intersection doesn't, you can't put an intersection in an intersection. Oh, I've, I've got a couple of bones to pick with Elementor's latest update. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so, so the, the grid option works really well. Uh, the headline option is nice because, uh, Gutenberg typical editor doesn't give you all the spacing options around the blocks. Uh, whereas the generate press or generate blocks, uh, headline block gives you all the, typography settings, uh, margin padding, you can add icons to it, uh, SVG icons. The button stuff works really nice. You can stack buttons next to each other really easily. Uh, but you start looking at layouts, uh, just website layouts, and you realize, you know, it, it literally is just a series of blocks. Here's a row with two columns and you stick some headlines or image in it or whatever it may be. Uh, so as somebody who came at this from a, a doubter perspective, uh, and who wasn't really interested in building out websites with uh, the block editor. I'm I'm not there yet. I don't think I would take on a client project and say I'm just going to use Gutenberg, but I can definitely see that on the horizon. And the performance benefits and the code that comes out of it, um, man, it's just it, it's it's really nice. I'm really I'm really surprised. So if anybody's out there hasn't tried it or has been on the fence like me, I definitely recommend the the block editor by itself. I I hadn't been able to master, but being able to introduce uh, generate uh, blocks to to the mix has helped out. So what kind of uh, what kind of performance bumps did you see? So uh, on a couple of the pages I recreated uh, the the almost everything loaded faster. The page sizes were a lot smaller and, you know, I, I didn't do really extensive testing. So I don't want to say like I put it through its paces. Um, but I mean, even if you, even if you just view the source code from the Elementor made one and the generate blocks Gutenberg one, I mean, it's, it's a night and day difference. It looks like two completely different things. Um, and, and you, you have so much easier way to manage all this stuff, you know? So I can definitely see the merits in it. Um, like I said, I'm not there yet, but I, I'm, I'm pretty interested. I'm going to keep working on it for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Um, one of the, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to hang on this for a super long time, but Elementor guys, come on. Um, so I, I've always installed, uh, my starter theme with, uh, a little bit of CSS to take care of that 20 pixels of space below your paragraph that they uh, they add 
And with this new update, um, or maybe it's, it's not super new and I'm just now like now noticing it, but they've started to add those, uh, that 20 pixels of space below titles now. So a bunch of my, uh, my, my layouts have like got that added space and man, it just, it, it looks ugly guys. Yeah. It's, uh, I've noticed that too. And I, I think me and you share the same little piece of code to do that. And mm -hmm. what it does is it, it gets rid of the extra margin on the last paragraph of, of a text block. Um, and, and what I found though, is I've found some, and, and I've been using that same thing too. Uh, that same piece of code to just get rid of it site wide. But what I found was when you're writing a blog post, uh, you almost need that because you need that extra space between the last paragraph and the next headline. So if you got like a H2, a paragraph, and then an H3, you need that, that H3 to be closer to the paragraph it relates to, not to the one above it. Right. Um, but it, if, if you, if you use that code site wide, it orphans all those headlines. So they're perfectly spaced in between both paragraphs. So you can't see which, um, which headline it belongs to. It's not, it's not grouped together properly. Uh, so I've actually gone to just, I set up a class for that particular situation. I think I just called it TXT or something, something I could remember. So I would just throw that into elementor widgets when I didn't need that extra space. Right. But you know, like, like you're saying with the, the headline, um, option, a lot of times if I just had like a small little subhead in a hero or something that I would typically use the text widget text widget for, uh, I would use the headline widget and then change it to a paragraph tag so I could get the styling of the paragraph, but not have that extra space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a pain in the ass, but yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, the, everybody says, you know, it's kind of, it, it obviously Gutenberg isn't to the power of page builders yet, but I'm more convinced now than I was before that it can get there. Like, right. with, you know, I, I looked at some of the other, I know there's tons of different, um, uh, block packages and stuff, cadence blocks. I looked at it, uh, but didn't play with it. I think for me, the, uh, the benefit of switching would be making things more simplistic and making things more streamlined. And if I just go to some kind of Gutenberg block package that has 500 widgets, just like Elementor, I might as well just stick with Elementor, um, you know? So, you know, for me, what I really liked about generate blocks is it's, it's dead simple. There's four freaking widgets you can use, but you can do just about anything you want with those four. I like, I haven't come to a, a layout situation that I wasn't able to accomplish with it. Yeah, I mean, when you were uh, you were screen sharing with me the uh, the other day, like showing me the the back end and everything, and like, yeah, there's only four options, but those four options cover pretty much all of the bases. Yeah, the 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 biggest gripe I still have is you still kind of have that back end front end uh, problem, where you know Gutenberg does a better job of actually visually representing what the website looks like on the front end. I mean, night and day difference from the old classic editor, mm. but still things aren't hundred percent perfect. You have things in the way on the side, so it's not the same width. Uh, I've noticed when I upload custom fonts, sometimes those don't come in on the back end. So I actually have to, uh, you know, develop on one monitor and then refresh on another monitor to see the front end. So, uh, you know, I still don't like that experience with Elementor. That's obviously still better. So I think they have some work mm. to do there, but, um, and a lot of that too could be that uh, that both of us come from a design background, so not being able to see the design while we're working on it, like that, uh, that kind of throws off our 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 vibe, I guess. Can you imagine if you had to do things like that in Photoshop or Illustrator? I wouldn't be a designer. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> be maddening. All right, so that brings us to the uh, the last segment of this episode. We're going to talk about a post in the group. And like I said, Matt hasn't seen this one. Uh, it was made just 15 hours ago, so on June 1st. And we'll drop a link um, in the notes here to it. But it's actually a post Doug made. It hasn't got a whole lot of uh, comments, 18 at this point. But it's something that I think raised an interesting, bigger question. So what he wrote is, well, a prospect has come to me asking if I can design their site for them on Weebly. Mm. How many of you do this? I feel like I don't want to go down that road. Okay. And so I'm not here to necessarily bring this up 
to discuss the merits of Weebly uh, because I think we all prefer WordPress to Weebly. But it does make me think like, where do you draw the line? Like obviously somebody asking you to develop a website in Weebly is very closely related to what we do for work. It's not like they came to him and asked him, will you mow my lawn? Like he could mow somebody's lawn, but that's obviously not the work he does. You know, so it's, it's somewhat related. Uh, but at the same time, you know, do you start using tools that aren't yours? Do you turn down money that, I mean, either one of us could jump in Weebly and make something probably better than the client could themselves. Mm -hmm. But is that something we should be spending our time doing? And where do you draw the line to what you will do and what you won't do? So I think, I mean, I have, I've done it once. Uh, I've built a, a Weebly site because it was requested. Um, I think I would start with asking why. Like, why yeah. do you want Weebly over anything else? And like, really listen to their, to their, uh, their answer. I ended up saying, okay. And going forward with, uh, with building out a Weebly site, uh, because the client just knew Weebly much better. They were planning on, you know, taking care of it themselves. There's uh, there's a lot less management involved because yeah. they take care of it. Um, so like, you know, they had good points. They were a, a current client that I had been doing, uh, like, you know, flat design flat design for. So I just bit the bullet and I did it. Will I ever do it again? No. Um, mainly because like you said, do you start using other people's tools? Do you start like, you know, doing all, all things like differently? Um, I walked away from that project knowing that I could have done it better had I used tools that I was much more familiar with. Um, and plus like, you know, WordPress does give you the, uh, the added benefit of a ton of different plugins. So like, you know, if you have a specific thing or a specific goal in mind, you can do that. Um, and I was, I, I felt kind of boxed in and limited as to what uh, Weebly provided. I'm happy enough with the outcome of the site, but I just, I know that I could have done better. Um, and I think this, what I'm saying now is exactly what I would tell uh, a, a potential client that would ask, like to use a different platform. I'd ask them why, see what their answer was. And then I'd tell them the story that, I can do a much better job and, you know, we can reach your goals much quicker, much easier if we did it this way. And if you want to yeah, find somebody I, else to do it, that's cool too. Yeah. And I think I used to be like really defensive when, uh, you know, I, I would have to defend WordPress over other solutions. And I've relaxed on that a lot because I realized that those other solutions are very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, my customers have heard of Wix and Squarespace because they're on TV all the time. And most people that come to me don't know what WordPress is. Hell, I bet you a lot of my clients that I have been working with for years have no idea their website's WordPress. It's never come up. They've never asked. They don't really care at all. Uh, but, you know, I, I do get phone calls or emails sometimes when a choice like Weebly or Wix or Squarespace just makes way more sense for the client. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the things that will I'll note off, you know, kind of red flaggy for me are when a business is just starting out or they don't know exactly what they're doing. You know, that's a really good time to play with one of those builders. It's super cheap. You don't have to invest a lot. You don't have to do the maintenance stuff. You know, you can be up and running in a day, pick a template, throw some content in there. You know, for the right for the right use case, it's it's the perfect solution. So, you know, my what I've usually done is just told them to go do it themselves, or you know, search online for somebody that can help you with that. Wix has like a pro pro program or something where they have Wix developers that will help you, mm -hmm. um, like certified or whatever they go through. Who knows what that is? But um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't. I just don't know where you where you draw the line. I had a customer ask me if if I would come take photographs for him. I thought, well, you know, look, I have this nice DSLR right here. Uh, I love taking pictures. You've got a good eye for it. I've seen your some photography. Them, you're, you're pretty good. Some of them turn out good, but yeah, I show you the ones that turn out good and trash the other 200 that came out <laughs> like shit. Um, and I ended up telling this customer no, um, because I just didn't feel confident in my skills that I could like take money and feel good about the result. like. Not guarantee, yeah, almost kind of guarantee the results that would come out of it, that they would get what they wanted out of it. I just didn't feel confident enough to do that. Uh, and I didn't want to do it for free. So uh, maybe if I had felt like doing it for free, I would have gone and mm -hmm. gone ahead and done it. But it's weird trying to figure out like where you draw the line. And I, I don't think I've been able to quite define it in my head yet, but I'm, I'm with you. Find out the why. If 
if they're picking word or they're picking wix or squarespace or weebly because it's something they heard of or because they already signed up for a free account or whatever it may be then i think there's opportunity there for you to explain kind of the pros and cons of those platforms versus wordpress um, and maybe come to a solution that makes sense and maybe your solution is better however if it if, if it is the right solution for them you know for me i i don't have the time to take on projects that aren't using my tool set it's, it's going to take me twice as long to build a weebly site as it is a wordpress site um, i don't feel like i should charge as much for it because it's like a diy platform even though you can charge whatever you want um, I, i'm not going to be as confident about the results so where my business is today like i'm probably just going to keep turning those things away mm -hmm. but i mean if you're if you're in need for business and you're trying to grow your company, you know, the, the customer's always right mentality. I mean, I could see if, if you do think it is the right solution for their needs, hell, if you can do it, go in there and do it, make some money. Well, I can tell you that, uh, that 10 years ago, uh, when I first started my business, um, I was doing mostly branding and, uh, like print design and package design and zero web design. Um, so while I was while I was focused more on the uh, the flat uh, flat side of things, I actually did have a, a Weebly website. That was what I built mine on because I knew nothing about web design at the time, and it was easy enough, and it was in it was it was affordable, um, and it was fully managed. So, yeah, use cases. It worked for me for some time, and then I got into it. I I learned that I I should know better. I did know better, and and went on to, to something that, that worked better, that was a little bit more open and, and I don't know, afforded better uh, possibilities, I guess. Yeah, and I guess the other thought too is, you know, if you're in the right position, it's not always a bad idea to just take some opportunities. Uh, when I was sick of my full-time job and looking for other options, uh, just somebody I knew said, hey, can you help us with our website? I didn't know anything about websites. I I literally hadn't the slightest clue, but I'm like, you know, I just told them like, hey, I'll be glad to take a look. I don't know, but you know, they just knew me as the computer guy. You right. know, so, uh, so I'm like, you know, I'll be glad to take a look and then look here now I own a website company. Uh, and it was only cause I took a chance on those things. So I can see the merits back and forth. It's just one of those interesting things. I don't think there's a way to answer Doug's question in the group with a definitive, this is what you need to do. I think it's very case by case basis. Is it the right solution for the customer? Uh, is it something you can do and still be profitable? Uh, um, you know, is your business in a position where you need the work, where taking on that work could really help you out? Then, you know, I think there's a yes and no option in there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm really curious, you know, this is an open ongoing uh, conversation in the, uh, the admin bars uh, group on Facebook. So for those of you that are members, definitely throw in your, uh, your, your opinions. How would you handle it if somebody, uh, were to ask that and have they in the, in the past, I'll bet you that, uh, many, many of our, uh, our members have gotten that question. Um, yes, and, and if you're if not you're... a member, you can go to the admin bar.com forward slash group and, uh, and join. Uh, I don't, I don't remember what number we're at now. There's quite a few of us over 2000 people. I don't really keep track of the numbers. Uh, I will mention before we get out of here, uh, we still have the website owner's manual, uh, at a discounted price. I took it, I took $10 off of it when all this COVID stuff happened. And my uh, notice on the site says now $10 off from now until, uh, well, until we change it. <laughs> So it's still at that price, $27.99. I'm, I don't have any set date of when I'm going to change it. Um, there is also coupon codes out there. Um, I know we've done some with WP Builds. Mm -hmm. I want to say Chris Castillo has a coupon code for his group. Roby has a coupon code. Uh, there's several people out there. If you search for it, you can find a coupon code. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Use all of them you can. Some of them I forgot to press the button where you can't stack multiple coupons. I've seen some orders come through in like the 12 to $13 range because people figured out the right, the right formula there. And so you know what, if you do your homework and, uh, and you find those, then that you deserve that. <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. Good on you. So, uh, that's still there. You can go to, uh, get the and check that out. And, uh, I guess that's it for this new, uh, this new format. I think I enjoyed it. What did you think, Matt? Yeah, I actually, uh, I think this was great.
All right, guys. Well, if that helps you out, the easiest way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channels, share our content, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye. See ya.